What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park books. Specifically the second novel, The Lost World, where I've always gotten a lot of questions from people on whether or not a dinosaur in that book had feathers. Now, what's really interesting about this little piece of trivia and the question in general is the fact that it does exist on a dinosaur that we'd already seen before, but at a different stage in life that was bred in the wild. You see, in The Lost World, an entire subplot involving Lewis Dodson stealing dinosaur eggs for Biosyn on Isla Sorna was cut out of the film adaptation and Spielberg's movie never really tried to make that stuff in the final film at all. But here in the book, we can see Dodson and a couple of others successfully steal dinosaur eggs from a herd of Myasaura before going into the Rex nest for an even bigger prize. It's here where we get our first feathery dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park series, which are notably Tyrannosaurus Rex, animals that we'd already seen before in the last book that didn't have any feathers at all. You see, for some for some reason, the baby tyrannosaurs in Lost World are described as something like small cassowary birds. The animals were said to have large eyes, short snouts, be a pale brown color with a noticeable ring of down around their necks. One of the animals was even cowering and pulling its downy neck close to its body. Now, what makes this little detail so interesting in the world of the Jurassic Park series is the fact that it's only the little ones that were said to possess this attribute. They're the only ones that have like this ring of down around their necks. So that's why the question of, well, did they have feathers? Was it back in the books? And what did that look like? Well, this is where it comes from. Now, the recent Folio Society books that were released seem to adapt the adult tyrannosaurs with the same sort of feathery material on the backs of their heads and necks as well, although I guess it'd be different than just down, but it's hard to tell. I bring this up because at the time, there was kind of this widely accepted fan theory for not the Lost World Jurassic Park movie, but rather the next film, Jurassic Park 3, where a lot of us were under the impression that the reason the raptors looked so different in that movie was because they had begun to evolve. Uh, this is the Site B Laboratory. Now hear me out here. One of the taglines that is still in use for JP3 on Amblin's official website was something has evolved. Well, there was also lines on posters like evolve or die back when the movie came out. The first saying is obviously a play on Lost Worlds promos that read something has survived. Now, we don't really have any concrete information in the canon of the Jurassic Park films that would suggest that this is exactly what was going on here, with the more likely and modern acceptance being that the dinosaurs were just different versions that engine bred, but there is a lot of cool speculation to be had over whether or not the animals were reverting back to their more paleontologically accurate selves when being bred in the wild, like that frog DNA was being bred out of them, and they were more or less complete genomic creatures that you wouldn't get in the actual theme park. I'm not so sure that's what Crichton was implying here with the Lost World book, because he could have just been giving the little tyrannosaurs some attributes that they would grow out of as they got older, but it's still something really fun to think about, and personally, I think the idea of having a return to Site B or some other island where some of the older generations of dinosaurs had begun to evolve and change more into feathery or bird-like designs with down is a fun one, but I don't even know if I'd welcome that for myself on a personal level. Now, I say that because there's just something uniquely cool about the way Industrial Light and Magic and Stan Winston Studios designed those dinosaurs in the first few movies, and the Tyrannosaurs, Dilophosaur, and Raptors in particular have always stuck with me as being incredibly iconic special effects creations, and those creatures don't have any feathers at all in the first couple of films. Of course, there was another feathery dinosaur design that was supposed to debut with the Lost World movie, and that wasn't the Tyrannosaur hatchlings, believe it or not, but rather the Pteranodons that were intended for the end of the film at the time. These animals went by a lot of names during production, with some designs even being of the Geosternbergia, but the unused Stan Winston creatures were these fluffy animatronic puppets that would have been used during a gruesome ending to the film. I did a whole video on that years ago, but yeah, this is just a couple of the examples of old school Jurassic Park material trying to adapt feathers, or at least pycnofiber-like material or down, to their older genetic clones. Of course, it didn't happen, but both the Lost World book and movie had little steps in this direction until Jurassic Park 3 utilized the quilled mohawks on the male raptors in that film. And personally, I've never been a fan of those when compared to the velociraptors from the second film, those tiger stripe ones are just, they're uber cool in my opinion. But anyways, guys, I wanted to get all of your thoughts on this subject matter. Feathers have become an interesting
interesting discussion in relation to the Jurassic Park franchise, but way back in 1995 and 1996 during production of the second movie, they were featured in the series in little bits of dinosaur or pterosaur material that isn't really talked about. Whether or not that'll get adapted into some other form of media, I have no idea, but seeing little pteranosaurs that look like cassowaries with a lionish mane of down around their necks that they curl into to protect themselves, it's kind of interesting to think about, don't you think? But hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on all this information happens to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely, and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.